My first guest is widely regarded as the finest violinist in the world. I bet this guy is not wearing light-up clothing. Uh, he is also known to millions of people who have never been inside a concert hall as a funny and engaging guest on television programs like this one. We're proud to have him with us tonight. Welcome, please, Itzhak Perlman. Nice of you to be here. I, uh, it's actually a thrill to meet you, and, I, and I'm glad you found time in uh, your busy schedule to be here. I saw, I saw a picture of you in the Sunday Times uh, on the sports pages. I, always, I can't make it into the music pages these days, so I, <laughs> so I, I always take the alternative. And what, what was the purpose of you being in the sports pages? I have no idea. Uh, actually, uh, I got called by somebody because there was an article about me in, in the sports pages about the three, four months ago, because, you know, I live in an apartment that Babe Ruth used to have and so on and so forth. So, so my name was given out. And so the lady asked me, uh, what do you think is the outcome of the Cooney uh, Holmes fight? And I said, what? <laughs> and so she said, well, what do you think of that? And I said, I had no idea. So she said, she said do you mind if we print that? Mm -hmm. I said, not at all. So <laughs> it said, Actually, the quote that it says is, oh, my God, what do I know from such stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, it was interesting. It would be interesting to see a quote from Larry Holmes about classic violin music, probably, I guess. But, probably a similar quote. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, you mentioned something else that I find interesting, that you're now living in Babe Ruth's old apartment. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've lived there a long time? Yes, it's taken us quite some time to cover all the little holes in the wall, you know, you use for batting practice. Yeah, babe. And we're just replacing the windows now, you know, several home runs. Uh, now, is this something that, uh, I mean, you decided I've got to live where the babe lived, or? Uh. No, I felt that I wanted to live with uh, where somebody who was a little overweight. You know, and so, and uh, I felt that was something. But in addition to being a world-class musician, you're the best at what you do, aren't you? I don't, I don't know. I try my best. <laughs> Um, in addition to playing the violin, which of course is a full-time non-stop, you're quite a, a, a Yankee fan. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe not, maybe... <laughs> Wait a minute, uh, what kind of fans do they have here? These are, I think these are good... Uh, Mets fans? Red... I do follow the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> but how did a, uh, a fellow who was born in Israel and, and came to this country, uh, how old were you when you got here? Thirteen. How did you become uh, a rabid uh, baseball fan? Well, I tell you, it's one way of learning English because I had a transistor radio and all I listened to was games. I, I followed soccer when I was in Israel. So I was sort of following sports all the time. And my first, uh, you, I don't know if they told you, my first game that I've heard was the uh, championship between the Yankees and the Pirates. There was a one, 60 or 61? Yeah, 60. 60. And uh, I was rooting for the Pirates. I didn't know any better. I, mean, uh, I didn't know Yankees, Pirates, or anything, and I was playing in an, in an orchestra, in a little chamber orchestra at Juilliard at that time, and uh, with my broken English, I said, me, roots for Pirates, almost got killed, you know, <laughs> and so I knew better, and then immediately I became a Yankee fan. Yeah. Uh, the article you alluded to earlier, you're talking about in the, the New York Times sports page, you were uh, speaking of the comparison of Reggie Jackson's swing to a person playing a violin. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a legitimate comparison? Well, every, in everything that you do, which is physical, uh, when it looks good, it's probably, you know, it, it's a very, very important uh, indication as to how you do it. You know, the swing, uh, when you see somebody playing the fiddle without even hearing, there are certain things that they would do that you can actually see without hearing. You know that they're doing it fairly mm -hmm. well. And, you know, you have to look comfortable when you do things. You know, yeah. it's, uh, and playing a violin is no exception. As a matter of fact, playing the violin is one of, the, one of the most uncomfortable things to do. You know, when you think that you have to hold the violin like this. I mean, have you ever seen anybody walk down the street going like that, mm -hmm. you know? It's not a very natural thing, so you have to be as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. When, uh, when you're out touring the United States, do you find yourself playing the same piece of music many times from city to city, or do you, do you break it up every time? Well, I'm lucky. I don't, I'm not associated with any particular special mm -hmm. kind of music, so I, play, I, I have a lot mm -hmm. of variety. I do repeat, of yeah. course, but not in a row. Do you ever, in concert, get bored or tired, or your mind starts to wander, you want to catch a plane, and you think, I'm going to goof with them tonight, 
and, and just play tricks that only... I, I, uh, I don't have to try to do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no you, you, actually, when your mind starts to go mm -hmm. like this after you think about the pizza that you're going to have mm -hmm. afterward as a Chinese food or something like that, it's actually a challenge yeah. you know, to, to see how, what else can I do for the 400th time to yeah. make it more interesting. But it's interesting, you do have that capability, don't you? You can think about literally the pizza or the chili or whatever you're doing while you're in your white tie. For and a tails. couple of seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's fascinating. And, uh, Mr. Perlman would like to know what year that was uh, first released. The Paul. original song. The original, original one. By Phil Upchurch, the instrumental. I would say maybe 62. 62? Was it earlier than then that? Then the Dovell's the vocal version, but 63. That was what, that was a 63? I think, yeah, <laughs> Philadelphia. Yeah, it was a little, yeah. It yeah. sounded quite early. And the name of the, the Blues Magoo song? We Ain't Got Nothing Yet. My, oh my. Isn't he amazing? You Just ought to win a Buick one night, Paul. I, mean, I want to ask Yitzchak, as I would refer to him. Did Properly you pronounced. Did you bring your axe with you? The what? Did you bring your axe? <laughs> Which? <laughs> my axe. David, explain. Oh, I think he's talking about it. No, I didn't bring my axe. Oh, we're disappointed. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Next time. Next time. That's, that's an interesting question. What kind of uh, violin or axe? You don't, do you, uh, never mind. What, what kind of uh, violin do you, do you play with, do you prefer? Well, I have the, uh, what, what do you mean do I prefer? You, do you I take a, with you. I, when you really want to show them some stuff, what do you bring out? The only one I got. Yeah. My <laughs> only axe. <laughs> Your only axe. Yeah, only axe. No, I have a Strad, uh -huh. Stradivarius, and uh, it's called the Mickey Moto Strad, made in Japan. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the only violin I have. It's a Stradivarius, made in 1714. Mm. Quite an old axe. Now, um, <laughs> what, is, what is the other uh, high-quality violin that's made? Uh, Guarneri. Guarneri. Guarneri, And yes. these are roughly both of them made in the 1700s? Yes, 1700. Early 17. Guarneri was 1740, beginning 1740, and Strad was slightly earlier, and 1738. And how many of both those names were made, do you suppose? Well, I know that right now there are not too many of them. Strad, I'm sure maybe three or four hundred strats, mm -hmm. and I don't know about Guarneri's, probably even less, I'm not sure. Now, now why is it that uh, violins made over 200 years ago, now we have far better technology, are know. still better than the best we can turn out today? No idea. I absolutely, you know, people have tried so many things, it just doesn't work. They don't know what the secret is. Is it, is it? It's nice to have a secret, you know, isn't yeah, it nice it's that great. nobody knows? But would, would I be able to make the determination, would I be able to say, yes, there's the one from 1714 and there's the one from Kmart. Would I be able to... Uh... For, uh, well, I'll tell you, Kmart, I'm not sure. <laughs> they're, they're making pretty good stuff. But listen, you could tell an A and P any time. <laughs> no, it's, it, you might, if something is really, really horrendous, uh -huh. as opposed to something terrific, but, you know, on a certain level, you can't really tell. Yeah. Uh, the, the player can tell, though. It must be maddening to people who are making violins today who, that they still can't capture that quality. Well, uh, it's an it's, uh, ongoing uh, quest, I, I must say. You know, they've tried all sorts of things. You know, to, to, the other day I was playing someplace uh, in Europe, and they came with a laboratory, f a big laboratory, and they said, can we knock on your fiddle? <laughs> I want to knock on my fiddle. I mean, my fiddle is from 1714. What do you want to knock on my fiddle? Uh -huh. So we'll just give it one little knock. Uh -huh. So I said, what'll that do? Well, we will record the knock mm -hmm. and compare it to other knocks from other fiddle, you know. Uh, you know, they wanted me to do the Ina Klein and Nock music. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> so anyway, so they did that, but I don't know what's that going to do. Don't know what became no. of it. I, is I it know. fair to ask you what your uh, violin is worth? I suppose that's maybe a dangerous thing it's to be talking fair. about. It's not fair. Not fair. Uh, it's a lot of money. It's more than money. I would guess. Yes. <laughs> Um, oh hmm. no! No, I don't. No, I don't want because <laughs> because that would uh, you've lost a, a, a violin or two, haven't you? No, just one. Just one. It wasn't mine. Oh well, those are the, that's the kind to of lose, sure. <laughs> no, it was a it, it, it was loaned to me by Juilliard uh -huh. a long time ago in '64, and at that time it wasn't worth much, only twenty thousand dollars. So, mm. Uh, mm. oh, why did I say that? Uh, so, uh, but it was returned the next day. So it was. Not, no, it wasn't returned, was it? Yeah, it was found. It was found in a pawn shop. See, now that's that's a difference. That's not actually being returned. It that's was <laughs> found in a pawn it shop. Was, yeah, it was found in a pawn what, shop. What did it go for? At Fifteen the pawn bucks. Shop? Fifteen dollars. Yeah. Mm. It was a good deal. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, do you? Um, I, I guess we're going to pause here. But your, your first, the the thing that brought you to America. Am I? Ed Sullivan. I this? Was it Ed, Ed Sullivan? Sullivan? Yep. Yeah. How how did that happen? 
Well, he came to Israel and he had a talent audition, audition for talent, and they, they took me. And you were how old 13, at the time? Yeah. 13 years That's old. amazing. Uh, yeah, tell me about Ed Sullivan. What, what, was that his regular Sunday night show, or was this... Uh, yep, the, uh, Sunday night show. And wh what did he, you think of this man? He wanted, uh, he wanted an old Israeli show on mm -hmm. his television, mm -hmm. and he came to, the, to Israel, and there were nationwide competitions from every walks of the entertainment field. And he actually chose a variety show made out of Israeli artists. Now, when word got around about the 13-year-old, a prodigy on the violin, what was the reaction for you and your family? Well, there was one way of getting uh, to the States. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody from a small country, no matter what country it is, wants to go and study further abroad, whether it's from the United States to Europe, Europe to the United States, or especially from a small country such as Israel. Mm -hmm. And so I was very, very excited. And you Very uh, excited. Uh, did you uh, audition for Juilliard at that? Uh, yes. Age? After yeah. I came to the states, then then I played for, uh, you know, then I played the audition for Juilliard. And what was that? What was their reaction to you? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, when I was thir you know, I was thirteen. It was a uh, the reaction, and I can see it right now. The reaction to a thirteen-year-old kid to come in. They mm -hmm. said, uh, "Wait a minute, you know, this is kind of a little circusy." Mm -hmm. And you know, the 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 fact that. I was uh, disabled, I was walking with crutches, I'm sure it didn't hurt mm -hmm. the whole, you know, the whole scene, you know, a little kid and so on. And a lot of people resented this whole bit oh, really? that I was, yeah. Yeah, that I was there and being sort of playing concert at that young age and, yeah. and, and doing that. But your skills uh, must have just uh, uh, leveled these folks. Well, at that time, I, I didn't feel I was uh, incredibly talented. I felt I was very talented, but I didn't feel that I was a real, you know, wonderkin genius type. You know, I, f I felt that I played very well for 13, but mm -hmm. nothing extra extraordinary. Yeah. Have, you, have you run into anyone since uh, at that stage, uh, a child that has the development that you had? Oh, oh plenty of kids with, with far more development. You oh, know, really? I, I, just today I saw a little girl walk by the street, and it was so funny. Uh, she just came from Julia, 10 years old. I ask her, oh, where are you coming from? Well, I come from Julia. Yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 her mother said, she just played audition. Oh, what, did the, uh, what she played? She said, Bartok Concerto. You know, you know Bartok Concerto? That's a concerto that you play when you're 25 years old. That's a tough piece, yeah. and you're a little 10-year-old. Yeah, and then so the, the Bovells uh, did that in 62, I think, didn't they? The Bartok Concerto. <laughs> uh, are your hands insured? Do you, do you pamper them? Do you baby them? Every night I take a, well, no, I don't. <laughs> are, are, do you find yourself being extra careful with them? No, not really. Uh, you know, I'm not. Uh, I wouldn't go out of my way to uh, work with saws. You know, or, or <laughs> go saw. I mean, I'm not going to do that. You know, Power I, tools, I, maybe yeah, not a hobby know, for right, you. you know, no, a black and decker. You yeah. know, <laughs> you know like that. But you know, I do cook, uh -huh. and you know, sometimes uh, I find myself, uh, you know, cutting a little bit more than I wish. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I. A you, see, bit. you seem to have. Uh, you're, you have large hands. They're mm. very muscular and, and large. Is that a, a hindrance or, or an asset in playing the violin? In playing the violin, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. As a matter of fact, uh, it's a real asset for pianists mm -hmm. and for cellists, and but for violinists, it doesn't really matter. As a matter of fact, I have a little trouble on the on the top. You know, real trouble over there. And because the spaces on the violin are very small, as you get under the top, and when and so I've got to really squeeze. Uh, mm -hmm. my fingers together, but that's the only problem I've got. Yeah. I was reading this afternoon something, uh, a couple of things. One, you mentioned that if a violin, very sensitive instrument, uh, I'm telling you, yeah, be careful with them, it's because right. they're going to go on it's the... Right. These things could go on the blink like that. Um, uh, it can, uh, a string can go flat in the I, middle of a... Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Uh, a string will go flat, and yes. to me, when y you see this in bars all the time, a guy playing a guitar, <laughs> a string goes flat, and he changes it or tunes it or something. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you can't do that, can you? Yes, of course. I, I, I do it uh, if I stop, uh -huh. or I do it by uh, making up the space. Yeah. Now you actually. I'm can, very good at that. You actually adjust. I yeah, mean, you adjust automatically. It doesn't go that. It doesn't go that much. Uh -huh. It's when your string breaks that's when you got problems. Yeah, yeah. That's when you got what we say in French, tsoas, you know, the, the word. And that's either you say to the audience, excuse me, but I got to change, or mm -hmm. you change with a concert master if you play mm -hmm. with an orchestra. Mm -hmm. And that can be very exciting. Yeah. Sometimes when the concert doesn't go very well, you do it on purpose, and then it's a big <laughs> success. Uh, you, you mentioned, uh, oh, I, I wanted to ask you what you've been doing lately. I know you're involved in a, a particular project that you wanted to mention. Oh, well, I'm, I'm involved in all kinds of projects. Uh, my main, the main project that I'm involved in basically 
uh, to uh, about the disabled. This is something that uh, I've done. Uh, I just was I was just in Washington, and that's all I've been doing besides playing concerts. Mm -hmm. uh, is to talk to the National Endowment for the Arts about budget cuts and to talk about budget cuts uh, with regards to rehabilitation and mm -hmm. so on. And so this is really the main uh, the main thing that I'm doing. And I was saying to some people that if I stop playing the violin tomorrow. I could have a job as a keynote speaker <laughs> or as, as a touring speaker uh, 24 hours a day. Yeah. It's quite incredible. Yeah. Uh, 1981 was the year of the disabled person. person yes. did, did that help? No. Did it, it didn't help. It was a terrible year because of the budget cuts. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of talk, but not enough was done. And I just hope that the next couple of years will not be as catastrophic because mm -hmm. we just have to have awareness constantly. and. Uh, with the budgets, uh, every everything gets affected. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've enjoyed talking with you. I know you're leaving for Europe uh, shortly. In the Very next, shortly. Yes, and, I, and when you come back, if you have a, a chance, I'd love for you to come back. I and would love chat it. Chat a little it more. Was great, Mr. Itzhak Perlman, folks. We'll be right back.